Hey there, card folks, Speed Robo here, and welcome to today's episode of Blitz Brawl. Down on red, we've got Patrick, loving the red corner, bringing Carthul, representing his faction of Geth. And up on blue, we've got the regular Titan Empire, bringing a list we haven't seen for a while, but one of my favorites, Double Angel. So what's really cool about this list is that Archangel can resurrect Angel. And when Angel is resurrected, it brings back Angel at full mana, allowing you to resurrect another thing with your base Angel, which is just fun. That is what we call in the business fun. And I enjoy that. Priest going down. We've got Goblin Lackeys on the side showing support. Scorgs entering the board in some interesting positions. That Wow, okay, Patrick's bringing a lot more Scorgs than normal. Double Tactician is flying onto the board. This is the Blitz format, ladies and gentlemen, so it is going to go fast. Goblin Slingshot, Patrick's signature card, able to sacrifice one of his units to deal damage to a target enemy within three range. Longtime viewers of this series will know it and will love it. Putting a Longbow Archer in basically the archer spot. Carthul already seeing draft. Yeah, if your opponent matches your gold, you can draft your hero because it's seven gold and then pass it back to your opponent because you have drafted, which is a really interesting trick and trap that I like to set up. Enforcer dropping himself down on the board. This can prevent an enemy unit from attacking. I don't know about this uh, draft positioning here. Uh, Razormane Manticore is kind of countered by Enforcer, uh, just turning off its attacks and then you can just ignore it. Mmm. Pikeman, a really strong unit. Uh, Steadfast can really mess up a lot of Gath's charging plays. Pikeman is a classic unit and one that's near and dear to my heart for sure. Grunt going down. Basically, the Pike Man of Gath. Their full four gold unit meant to sort of wall out the opponent and deal damage back. Pike Man with his steadfast showing up. Double Pike Man uh, in face of these double grunts. Just really solid, uh, straightforward positioning from both of these players. This is the kind of positioning that folks at home will generally see if you load up one of the pre constructed armies or kingdoms. Uh, in the Legacies Alert Tabletop Simulator mod, which you can download on the Steam Workshop. Uh, just go to Steam Workshop and search Legacies Alert will be the top result. Uh, download it, give it a shot, and enjoy. Uh, if you want to play with us, just uh, join the Discord. All the links for this are down in the description. And now we're seeing the ace unit of Empire's build, the Archangel uh, I like that position. It keeps it safe because you don't want the Archangel to die. You want your Angel to die. So I'm expecting Angel to kind of see an F5 placement with the Knight. Uh, I think Knight F5, Angel H5, something like that would be pretty good. That Archer is getting drafted to F6. Like, I, I know that. That's going to happen. Uh, Cave Troll also showing up. I mean, just look at those nine gold units right there at the points. Really good positioning. Yep. The Knight in the uh, F5 position, and then the Longbow Archer in the F6. Oh, man. Double Dragon Hatchling. So good. Patrick's positioning is looking really solid and really intimidating with a ton of actions. However, you can't count out the fact that Angel and Archangel do gain plus one action, so... Huh. I don't know about that angel positioning. Not sure how I feel about it, but we'll have to see how it pans out. They're going to launch straight into the battle phase, and away we go. All right, straight into the battle phase. Here we go. Uh, we haven't even had a chance to analyze the kits. And Battle Fury is even going down on that Skorg Archer right away, giving it plus one power and charging. And an extra action to Carthal, just firing that straight out of the gate. No fear from Patrick at all. Over to Empire's side, he's going to have to think about how he wants to handle this. Probably playing a little bit more defensively. 
No! No, he's not going to play defensively at all. He's going to be highly aggressive because anything that dies, he can just resurrect. Okay, this is this is pretty good. And his hero, Tristan, we haven't even had a chance to talk about Tristan. Tristan, with his baseline steadfast, means he cannot be charged. Worm scale mail, an extra armor and an extra health. Arrest to shut down enemy attacks. And Braveheart for an extra power. This is a... 4 power, 2 movement, 7 health, 1 armor, steadfast, monster of a tank. Drop this man straight in the center and tell your opponent to deal with it, honestly. Just, just do that. We're seeing a skip with the Pike Man. A little bit more cautious and defensive than I expected from Empire at this stage in the game, but we'll see how this pans out. Skip with Carthul. Both players not really wanting to move forward. Those tacticians and archers are pretty intimidating over on Empire's side, and the same can be said for all of this charging with the warg riders, and even the range damage with Goblin Slingshot. Like, I, I understand why both players are a little bit hesitant to push forward. Archangel is going to trigger its ability to give three shield to Tristan. Okay, really massively buffing him up. No, giving three shield to itself. Okay, so Archangel effectively now is four power, three movement, flying with nine health. And that other two mana on Archangel, we are definitely going to see used to resurrect uh, his base form Angel. Double Angel, really strong build, and really fun build to play around with. I wonder why Empire isn't pushing forward with these step. It's because of the Troll Shaman. Yeah, Troll Shaman here um, can grant the ability to ignore Steadfast to any of Patrick's units here. So that could be why he's being so cautious right now. But I think it's I think it's safe to push Pike Man up one hex. I think that's incredibly safe. We're just gonna skip with him though. Okay. I don't know. I think this is just handing a little bit too much advantage to Patrick here. Patrick just able to move in and set up. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this on Empire's side. I'm I'm hoping Empire can pull it off. I he's I'm sure he's got some kind of plan going. And that is going to be a buff, plus one range buff specifically for that uh, Elite Longbow Archer. This means that the Longbow Archer's range uh, goes in an arc like... Oh wait, no, it's got four range now, doesn't it? Yeah, so Elite Longbow Archer's range is like this. That's pretty intimidating. Another tactician buff. What's it going to be? Plus one movement! Okay, so now knight has four movement. It can strike... Ooh. Ooh, okay. So yeah, the knight... The knight's threatening the slingshot right now. Is that worth it? Yes, it is, because knight can just be resurrected. If I was Patrick, I would seriously consider moving the Razor Mane Manticore in front of the Goblin Slingshot to block that off. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I agree with that. Okay, Grunt pushes up by two, and then Longbow Archer just shoots it. I think Grunt is still safe. Ooh, Dragon Hatchling coming in, dealing two damage to Swordsman. But again. Ooh, quick heal from the Priest. Patrick's going to have to be careful about what he kills in what order, because these angels can just kind of mess them all up. And now Razor Main Manticore swooping in. 
There's a lot of pressure over on the left side of the board here. And unfortunately, most of the things that were over there are now exhausted. So it's going to be hard for Empire to defend. Enforcer is going to put the disarm on Razormane Manticore. This means that Razormane cannot retaliate during this round. Cave Troll captures center. A Gath staple move. Incredibly solid. Oh, I see. No, that's not a free hatchling. Because the Troll Shaman can power up Scorg. Uh, plus one. Let's see here. Yeah, he can also give piercing. So that means that plus one power, five power, charging, and piercing to ignore the armor, that would be a dead knight to that Scorg Hellion. Interesting, very interesting. Warg Rider closing in. And again, Patrick knows that these Scorgs are just acting as a, basically a defensive, you know, zone of control around this area, because any of them can get powered up and one-shot pretty much anything on Empire's side of the board. Disarm on the Cave Troll. I like it. And if Arrest is not used combinably, it is plus one action. So this is actually a really good setup for the next round to gain extra actions using Tristan. Similar to how Patrick gained extra actions using Carthol. Warg Rider closing in, just applying more pressure. This is a solid just V formation. This is some this is some chess-like structure here. I love seeing this. As an old chess pro, it always just makes me happy when I'm like, hey, look at that, look at that good formation. Mmm, that's good stuff. What's Troll Shaman gonna power up? Hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's just slingshot fodder. Angel flying over here and giving itself two shield. I'm not sure what that really does at this point. Uh, but I guess I'll find out. You know, there's a reason Empire's over there and I only get to talk about the game and never play it. And even when I do play the game... Uh, in my own video series, I tend to not win. <laughs> so, definitely a reason I'm a commentator. And not, not a commentator. Um, that's not legal. Oh, wait, yeah, oh, I see. He's not attacking with Skorgelion, he's using launch with Slingshot, and then using the combined to push up. Yes, never mind, that is exactly how that works. Yes, sacrifice the Skorg. Deal 5 damage, 1 armor takes it off. That's correct. Uh, and then the archer is going to go right there. Hellion pushes itself up again. Good stuff. Ending the round, and Empire is first on the play. Uh, Tristan not looking so hot right now, honestly. I want to see what Empire does to get out of this jam. Empire changing his mind on that disarm, going for the Tristan heal. Trying to absorb a few more actions from Patrick before Tristan's toast. Uh, I think that's I think that's a reasonable play, honestly. Weird idea, and hear me out. Troll Shaman, buff Cave Troll, right? That would not be bad. Because the Cave Troll's probably going to die anyway. And you can just make it not die now. And then give it charging and extra power, all this stuff, and just use it to kill whatever you want. That's not a bad play. That's really not a bad play. And a lot of options for Gath right now, but there's also a lot of options for Erengard. Just gonna take the Pike Man. Sure. Not bad. Not bad by any means. That's that's four gold that you just have now. And right now, there really isn't a consistent way to deal with this Razor Man.
Disarm the War Grider, that's very good. Protects both of these units. Because War Grider has allied pathing, so it can just go through and kachow. Oh, we're looking at the Troll Shaman! Blowing so much mana on this. Yeah, dumping it all on Skorg. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. It's going to be plus one power charging and ignore Steadfast. No doubt in my mind. Yep, plus one power charging. Oh, piercing! Going for the knight. He's going for the knight. Tristan doesn't matter. Oh, my goodness. The knight's just going to run away? Really? Oh, I don't know about that one. I would have probably had the knight just bash Cave Troll or War Grider, honestly. You know, just, oh no, my knight dies, whatever, right? It just, just resurrected. Like, that's, that's the whole thing. I don't know. Two damage on Tristan, back in the danger zone. A Cave Troll gets the kill. Or just slingshot with that got with that Hellion. Like Tristan's not in good shape. Okay, I kinda like that. Yeah, combinable disarm to disarm the war grider, then move away, forcing the slingshot to activate. Yeah, yeah, that's not you're not losing too much value out of your Tristan that way. You absorbed mana from Troll Shaman and Hatchling. And then got eight gold out of it. That's actually okay. That that's honestly okay. I'm not upset about that. Yep. The launch on Tristan. We knew it was coming. But there it is. Tristan, the one card on this board that can't be resurrected other than Archangel. I don't know. I really don't like the knight just retreating. I You've got all these resurrects, you can be so much more proactive. And I'm sure Empire's gonna comment down below and be like, No, no, Speed Robo wrong. And I'm probably wrong. I own that. But I like, I like attacking with stuff. I like killing the things. It's what I do. Hey, Gath player. <laughs> you know? A swordsman takes out the lackey, it's pretty good. I mean, not much else it was gonna do. I think at this point, um, we just Battle Fury Scorch Archer take the swordsman? That does leave a pretty nasty resurrect with the angel though, where he can just drop a swordsman here, here, or pretty much wherever else. Gain an extra action, gain an extra swordsman action, right? That could be dangerous, but we'll see. Those two tacticians on Empire's side are still active, they could buff anything here and that's pretty interesting those archers are also still active so here comes that tactician and the buff is plus one power very interesting i'm not entirely sure how that helps Interesting. Putting one damage on the disarmed war grider. Not sure what that does per se. War grider's just gonna move in. Ooh, this does mean the tactician can give plus one power, and then dead, dead war grider. Okay, not bad. Not bad. I like it. Well, I don't like it for Patrick. I think that was a potential misplay on Patrick's part, but for Empire, this could be big. Goblin Lackey sacrifices to heal the War Grider. Really smart counter to that. I honestly didn't even see that. Yeah, that's tricky. 
Now this elite longbow archer just has to shoot, uh, I don't know, cave troll, grunt maybe, dragon hatchling? It's tough. But uh, that really good target is now no longer a really good target. Putting the three damage back on the war grider anyway. Now it's battle fury time. No doubt in my mind. Resurrect the Pike Man to take out the Warg Rider. Okay, not too shabby. Down goes Swordsman. Yep, because that Resurrect's gone. Swordsman is now a safe take. Warg Rider's out of here. That does mean the Cave Troll could capture back. I'm not sure that's what Empire wants at this point. Genuinely, at this point, Angel's mana is spent. Just uh, take the dragon hatchling. Just take that hatchling. What, what's uh, what's Patrick gonna do about it? Kill your angel. Good. That's what we. That's what you want. Let's take the hatchling. Free. Basically free hatchling. Ooh, that is bold. Getting it in there. Getting in the mix. Carthil pushing himself up, ready to do some of his archer stuff. His archer stuff! It's all up to Empire now. And there's some really, really interesting things that are that can happen and would happen. I think this Pike Man here is just, I don't know, move... Uh, oh, jeez. F5 or something like that. Yeah, Angel take Dragon Hatchling, I do think, is the best play right now. Grunt moves... Pike Man take War Grider. It's so good right now. Yeah, this is this is looking good. Empire's finding ways to pull this back, bring back that gold value. Angels just give you such a strong comeback potential. They're so scary. You have to think about so many things. Uh interesting Pike Man placement. I'm not too sure on what's going on. Dragon Ashling just takes a tactician. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And Empire gets to go first, which is very nice for Empire. With this, what's he gonna do? Man, I don't like how close these things are to Empire. There's a lot of things that could go wrong with just the Razor Man Manticore alone. Dead, dead. Yeah, I'd say just disarm, disarm Razor Man. Yeah, that's what's happening. I think it's the best play. Still toast to the Warg Rider, but not much you can do about that. Yeah, the backline is. I think I think the backline on Empire has been su sufficiently and expertly flanked at this point. Uh, yeah, Empire Empire is caught in a pretty brutal pincer. What are we powering up? Excellent! And with Troll Shaman's ability, this card cannot be dealt damage this round. Very smart, very well done, and well executed. Let's go ahead and take a look at that ability one more time right now. There it is, you just destroyed at the end of the round. Amazing stuff. Battle Fury as well. Plus one power and charging, so that's a total of plus two power. This is five damage at one range. Oh, this can take out pretty much anything. Absolutely devastating. I could see the Scorg Archer actually moving here. Dealing damage to Angel and then getting launched by Slingshot to deal more damage to something. I could very see, much see that as a possibility. Plus one power to Pike Man, not too bad. Yeah, oh, that's even better. Move it there, deal damage, Slingshot moves up. That's a dead Archangel. Ooh, that's a dead Archangel. 
Oh my gosh. You, Empire, you have to heal that with your priest right now. Heal it with your priest right now or you just lose the game. No! The angel blocks! That's right! Slingshot can't move to that center now because the angel is blocking! Oh my gosh, and then that means... That means that he gets exactly what he wants because now the angel is going to have to die two enemy attacks, dealing its retaliate back, and then the angel's dead, and then Archangel resurrects! It's everything that Empire wanted! He did it! He pulled it off! Dealing one range damage to Angel. Good play to get started with. Uh, Goblin Slingshot can then deal some damage to Angel. Or you could use the Grunt. Yeah, so use the Grunt. Nice, use the Grunt. Yeah, yeah, use the Grunt. Angel's dead, that's good. Grunt, Cave Troll, dead. Well, Goblin Slingshot also works. It's not doing much else right now. Uh, one damage to Warg Rider, and then the plus one power means that Warg Rider is going to die. I like that a lot. Really well put together. Really well executed. And then Grunt takes three Retaliate from the attack. Yep. Very good. Warg Rider's down to the Pike Man. Angel's Toast, but that's exactly what Empire wants. Priest heals for two. This is it. Empire's getting exactly what he wants. Even if Patrick goes first, Empire still has exactly what he wants. So the next round, Score Garcher dies, and Empire gets to go first. Yep, heal with Priest. I think that's really good. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, Slingshot can sacrifice Cave Troll and kill the Archangel before it can resurrect. He can just do that right now. Wait a minute. Is that worth it, though? I don't know. Oh, this is big. Oh, I kind of like the Slingshot play, but then you still have this... Fully, at full, just ready to rock night that you have to deal with. I. Oh, that's so good, but so bad at the same time. But you have to kill that Archangel before it can resurrect or things are just going to get worse. Oh my gosh. Double Angel is here. It is back and it is showing why it was feared in this server a few months ago. There he goes, sacrificing the Cave Troll to take out the Archangel. I think it's really the only choice that he has left. Disarm the Razor Mane again. Oh, this is brutal. Oh, leave this poor man alone. Razor Mane can just fly back to center. Like, that's not bad. I'm not sure what that positioning of the Razor Mane does, to be honest. I don't think that's particularly good. Tactician coming in. Granting a buff to Pikeman. Plus one movement, I would expect. Yup. Battle Fury on the Troll Shaman, of course. Pikeman coming in. Yup. Troll Shaman, I think, could take out the Longbow Archer. That's right. Yes, good. But then Troll Shaman is toast to the knight. Pike Man's toast to the Razor Mane. Another disarm on the Razor Mane is what I see coming. Or, you could just have Enforcer move away, Knight takes Slingshot. I think Knight takes Slingshot. 
Ooh, yeah, that knight should take that slingshot right now. Yeah, that's pretty good. Battle Fury for Carthul. Enforcer actually striking the Razor Main. Oh, that's smart, because then Knight can take. Yeah, this is it. Carthul trying to grab center. And takes out the Enforcer. Double skip. It's all Empire. Knight captures. I think this is game. Yeah, this is it. That's it. There's nothing Patrick can do to win at this point. The remaining units close in. Round 7. Razor Mane sacrifices itself, and that is game. That was so close. I was so wrong. What a game, ladies and gentlemen. I was so wrong about that knight retreat at the beginning. Keeping that knight at full health was paramount to the victory. And it was just so fascinating to watch a sacrifice build versus a resurrection build and how the resurrection build started slow but built up over time and the sacrifice build came out swinging but just ran out of steam right at the end and couldn't quite close out the victory. I've been Speed Robo. Thank you all very much for watching at home and we'll see you next time. Bye bye